Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today we're going to be doing the if you liked this popular romance book, maybe you should check out this not so popular romance book. Baby, baby. So I don't really know what to title this video. I feel like the wording is very weird. Kind of, it's, it's like what people, the videos people do where if you like this book, check out this book, you know? But I'm only doing it with romance books because that's the majority of what I read. So I'm kind of doing it as uh, I'm talking about the popular romance book first. And then if you like the popular one, maybe you should read this uh, underrated one. You know, that's very similar. So we're gonna dive right on into the recommendations here. So if you love Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren, I really recommend that you read Man in Charge by Laurel and Page. So first, Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren, if you didn't know, is an office romance, hate to love. Basically our heroine is the assistant to this big CEO of this company in a major city. I think they live in Chicago and New or New York, either one. Basically she hates him, he hates her, they hate each other but they are so attracted to one another. Man in Charge by Lauren Lynn Page is about our heroine who works for this charity company. Um, and she's kind of like in charge of joining big companies with needy charities and kind of like bridging the gap between the two and setting people up to work with charities. At the beginning of this book, she meets the hero of the story because uh, she goes to the roof of a party she's at um, in like this big building and he is with somebody on the roof and she ends up seeing what's going on. But that's not the majority of the book, obviously. <laughs> and so the reason why I think you would like Man in Charge if you like Beautiful Bastard is because both of them are office romances. The heroine ends up working for or working with this a big company that the hero she sees on the roof. Um, she ends up seeing this guy on the roof and by some means she ends up figuring out that he works for this giant company and she coordinates with him and his company. Another thing is both books have steamy scenes in the office. There's in both books you have a boardroom scene. Yep, yep. <laughs> in both couples they both know they're not supposed to be with one another because it's quite forbidden. You're not really supposed to be with somebody you work with but they cannot like fight the attraction between each other. And something else that I find really funny that's very similar is that both of the heroes in these stories uh may or may not like to steal the heroine's undergarments <laughs> and take them and keep them in a drawer. <laughs> so I thought that was very funny and quite similar between the two. The next pairing that I have is if you liked Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon, you should check out Rescued by Her Alien Mate by Ava York and Star Huntress. Ice Planet Barbarians is very popular right now. Uh, I love this series so much. This is an alien romance series where human women are abducted by evil aliens and that spaceship ends up crashing on this ice planet that only has a few inhabitants on it that end up being blue aliens and they have mates and everything and it is really good. Each book is about a human woman getting their alien mate. Hi y'all. Um, this is just me popping in to tell you that some of the audio cut out for this one portion and I'm so sorry, I don't know why. So after me popping in right now, I'm now talking about Rescued by Her Alien Mate. I don't know why that cut out, but it just did. So now I'm talking about Rescued by Her Alien Mate. So enjoy. Uh, very similar, um, a bunch of human women have been abducted by evil aliens and that ship ends up crashing on a different planet filled with these other aliens. As you can see by the cover, some of them are also blue. When they crash, the kind of like king of this, or like leader of this town ends up finding them and him and the leader of the human women end up finding out that they're mates with one another, even though there's a language barrier between the two and they can't understand what the other person is saying at all. Both of these are obviously an alien romance. In both of these books, the human women are being kind of like tortured at the beginning by evil aliens. So just watch out and watch out for trigger warnings, especially with Ice Planet Barbarians. And obviously both of both both books, the human women end up crashing on a planet that is not the planet that they were originally set to go on. In both books, the first books in the series, the leaders of both groups of people end up getting together. So in Ice Planet Barbarians, Vectal is the leader of the Sukui clan and he ends up getting with Georgie, who's kind of like the leader of the human women. And rescued by her alien mate, the hero is also the leader of their alien race, and the heroine is the leader of the human women. In both books, in the first book, there is a language barrier. In Ice Planet Barbarians, 
they don't understand what they're saying to each other, but they still get it on with one another. And that also kind of happens in book one, except the heroine, um, before she crash landed in the spaceship, she ended up getting a translation device put on her. So she could understand what the hero's saying, but the hero could not understand what she's saying at all. In both the books, again, they both like get together <laughs> when there is that language barrier. So they don't know what the other person is saying and they still feel this connection, even though they don't really know what the other person's saying. Also in both books, since the hero cannot communicate to the heroine, they cannot tell the heroine that they are mates, even though they, they know. So the heroes in both books are the only people who know in the relationship that that is their mate that is their lifelong person. Okay, the next match that I have is If You Loved Just a Heartbeat Away by Cara Bastone. You should check out Intertwined Hearts by Kimmy Flores. So Just a Heartbeat Away is a slow burn age gap romance that I loved this year. It's one of my favorites of the year. In this book, you have our hero, his wife passed away and he is now the single father to a little boy. So the beginning of the book starts out with the father going into his son's classroom for kind of like a parent-teacher conference and his son's kindergarten teacher can tell that he's really struggling right now to take care of his son so she gives him a bunch of pointers and tips to help him years it is now years later a couple years later his son is still in elementary school at this point um, but he has always been grateful for that woman who gave him the advice and tips that he needed. He ends up meeting her again, her name is Via. He ends up coming across her again and he realizes that she is the new guidance counselor at the school that her that his son now goes to. And he is over 10 years older than her and he's trying to like come to the grips of this younger woman wanting him. You know, um, he thinks that she should be with a younger man and that she doesn't deserve all the baggage that he has, but she, she just wants him and his little family. Now, Intertwined Hearts by Kimmy Flores. It's been a quite a long time since I've read this book, but immediately when I read Just a Heartbeat Away, I, I thought about this book. I did. I believe in this book, the hero's wife ends up passing away as well. And so he's a single father to a little girl who is in kindergarten. And this book is basically about this little girl in kindergarten who wants her kindergarten teacher and her dad to get together so badly and that may or may not end up happening. So in both books, obviously, you have the teacher with their student's father romance. And also in both both books, you have the hero who has experienced grievous heartbreak with um, their child's mother. So I don't think Intertwined Hearts has an age gap in there. I don't remember, um, but I don't know. It just gave me the same vibes. Next, I have like the perfect pairing, okay? We have If You Loved The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I really recommend that you read Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. Now, I read this book a couple months ago with my lovely friend Zay over at Witty Reads, and she's the one who kind of like reminded me of this pairing, you guys. Because both of us have read The Simple Wild, we both really enjoyed it, and then she was talking about how Rustic Hearts gave her the same vibes as The Simple Wild, and I completely agree with her. In The Simple Wild, you remember Kala, she ends up going to Alaska. She's originally like a city girl. Um, she ends up going to Alaska, a very small town in Alaska, kind of like in the middle of nowhere to go see her ailing father. Her father is very sick and she has a relationship with Jonah who is a pilot. He's very different from her and it's very like kind of like enemies to lovers. And so Rustic Hearts is very similar in that way. Our heroine in here, she is a city girl. Her mother ended up leaving her father when they were very young. They used to live on a farm and everything. But when she was young, her mother ended up moving her to, I believe, New York City. It is years later and our heroine's grandmother ended up passing away. And so she goes back to her hometown, her little farm town, to um, go to the funeral and everything and to see her family. And another reason she goes there is to see her father, who she has not spoken to in years. There she ends up seeing her dad's new wife's adopted children. It's very complicated. So the hero is the technically nephew to the heroine's stepmom um, because our hero, his parents ended up passing away and so his aunt ended up taking custody of him. So these two are not related by blood at all. <laughs> she is very much the city girl and he is very much the farm boy and there is huge animosity between the two of them at first and then they reluctantly start to fall for one another. In both books, you have the rich girl, the very spoiled city girl, that goes back to a small town to visit their dad that she is very distant from. She then meets kind of like the native boy of the town who hates that she um, 
It's kind of like Bay City-esque. So I feel like this was a perfect pairing. So thank you so much, Zay, for giving me this recommendation. Next, I have If You Loved Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert, you should read Her Sweet Alpha by Thayer King. So uh, Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert is a romance that I enjoyed a lot. So our hero in here, he is a werewolf shifter and he ends up finding out who his mate is. And she may or may not be a werewolf hunter. You know, she's not a werewolf shifter at all, but it's just really cute and sweet and he's crushing on her hardcore in here and the heroine is just trying to kill him. <laughs> now in her sweet alpha, the heroine's not trying to kill the dude, okay? Um, but we do have the same instance of uh, a shifter romance, the hero in here, he is the shifter, he is the alpha to his werewolf pack. Um, and he ends up finding out that this girl is his mate by going to the diner that she works at and he smells her and he knows immediately that is his mate. And she's kind of just trying to come to terms with the fact that this giant shifter dude like wants her. She just can't wrap her mind around it. Both of these are shifter romances. Also, both of these are where the guy is the shifter and the heroine is not. In both books, again, the girls, the, the, the women in these books are very hesitant to like be the mate to the guy, even though the guys in both books like are so sweet and caring and just want to do everything for these women. The next pairing that I have for you is if you liked Neat by Candy Steiner, I recommend that you read Hate to Want You by Alicia Rye. Now Neat by Candy Steiner is actually the second in a companion series. I've only read this one in the companion series. I read it all on its own and it was completely fine for me. I didn't miss anything from book one. So the hero and heroine are kind of like at odds with one another because there is a family feud. I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, there's a family feud. And that's the same thing that is part of Hate to Want You by Leisha Rye. Both of these are just very Romeo and Juliet-esque feuding families. Um, they both don't like each other at the beginning, um, but then they get to know one another and they end up falling for one another and they have to hide it from their families because they know their families would hate it. So both of these take place in a small town. Both of them have big, families, like very rich families that have family feuds. Next, I feel like is a very popular pairing. We have If You Liked Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. You should read Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. Now Your Dad Will Do is basically a shorter, steamier version of Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. <laughs> if you don't know about the very popular Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas, uh, this is a romance book between the heroine of the book and her ex's dad. So the book starts out with our heroine who um, is moving in to her boyfriend's dad's house. Her and her boyfriend live together, but they can't live in the apartment that they were at at the beginning of the book anymore. And so they're, so her boyfriend's dad takes them in. And throughout them like living at this house, the heroine realizes how horrible of a person her boyfriend is and how amazing a person her boyfriend's dad is. <laughs> Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert is a very sh is a shorter book, probably like half the length. And our heroine ends up coming to the doorstep of her ex's uh, dad's house because she found out that her ex cheated on her. And so she plans revenge by uh, going to be with his dad. <laughs> and so they have like a rendezvous that happens for many, many, many days. So these are obviously very similar in the fact that you have a girl that gets with her ex's father. And both of them, also both heroines in the in these books have always been attracted to the dad. Cause a birthday girl, she actually met the dad before she knew that that was the dad. Like she just met him at a movie theater one time and thought that he was really attractive and sweet. Um, not knowing that that was her boyfriend's dad. In um, Your Dad Will Do, you read about how she liked the dad even before uh, she broke up with her boyfriend or her boyfriend cheated on her. And the last pairing that I have is If You Loved On The Islands by Tracy Garvis Graves. I really recommend that you read Withering Hope by Leila Hagen. Now, both of these books aren't necessarily my favorite books in the world, um, but I feel like there are other people's favorite books in the world. I know a lot of people love On The Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. I didn't really. I didn't love it. I gave it like, I think a three or 3.5 if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I liked Withering Hope, I feel like a little bit more than this one. Oh, these are so similar, so good. Okay, so On the Alley by Tracy Garvis Graves is an age gap romance where the woman is older. So the heroine of this book is the tutor to the hero. And I believe he had cancer and he ended up having to leave school. And so she's his tutor. And I believe that the hero's family is like in a different country or something and they have to go fly out to meet them. And so the only people on this plane 
going to meet up with his parents are the hero, the heroine, and the pilot. The pilot ends up, they're, like, ends up crashing their plane, and so the pilot dies, and the hero and the heroine end up being stranded on this island in the middle of nowhere. And they end up like living on this island for years. And don't worry, nothing rom romantic happens between the two of them until our hero is over the age of 18. And so it's a very survival-esque romance. Then Withering Hope by Leila Hagen is a very similar, but also not. Um, I believe the hero in here is the pilot? If I remember correctly. Or he's somebody else. I don't remember, I don't remember. But the heroine is actually on her way in this plane to go to her destination wedding. But the plane ends up crashing in the middle of the Amazon. If you don't know, the Amazon is huge. It is ginormous. You can't find anybody in the Amazon, y'all. If you get lost in the Amazon, you gone. <laughs> You're gone. So the plane ends up crashing and the hero and the heroine are the only survivors of this plane crash. And they end up having to um, be together for if not years, months, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember how long, but they're both there for quite a long time. Their romance is very forbidden because the heroine was on her way to her wedding, you know? Um, but she ends up falling for this hero through the experiences they go through. In both books, you have the horrible plane crashes. So just trigger warning for that, if that does trigger you in some way. Both of them have a forbidden aspect to it. In On the Island, it is an age cap. She is his tutor. And then in um, Withering Hope, she is already in a relationship. And they're both like in the wild and have to fend for themselves for quite a long time in both books. So there you have it. Those are some romances that you should pick up if you liked some other romances. I'm really unsure how to describe this video still. <laughs> let me know down below if any of these books intrigue you. If you want to pick up any of them, please let me know. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.